Hello, celebration. Hello, celebration. How you doing? How is everybody doing? Good to see you in the house of the Lord today. Hallelujah. Amen. Give you a second to get on. Give you a second to get on with us. Hallelujah. How's everybody doing tonight? Hope everyone's doing well. Amen. 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 We're trying to make sure we've got our screen good. Our picture hasn't come up real good today. Just, uh, if you can... Let us know if y'all can yes, see us. If y'all are on. Hallelujah. Hey, ahead. Christina. Hello, hey, Larry. Christina. Good to see y'all. Hey, Donya. Hey, Alvin. Donya. Hey, uh, Tyria. Hey, Aaliyah. Yay. Good to see y'all as well. Cindy says we're coming through clear. Coming through clear. <laughs> <laughs> we're in a little minuscule picture we're, on we our have, screen. We're we like, have a oh, picture. Let's see. I don't know what that happened. <laughs> Hey, Sandra, hey, good to Donya, see you as well. Hey, Alvin. Hey, Ateria. Hey, Aaliyah. Christina and Larry, Vida and Norm. Yes. Sandra, so good to see you. And Lenny and Sunil. Happy birthday, Sunil. Happy birthday, Sunil. Where are you seeing that? I, I saw it earlier today. Well, happy, happy birthday, birthday to him. Happy birthday. Hey, uh, Kira, so good to see you. And Joshua. Hey Tammy, hey, Tammy and, and Lonnie. Lonnie, so awesome to see y'all, and hey, Sherry, Jess. so good to see you, <clears throat> Christina, so good to see you, and Angel, and the boys, so Absolutely. Glad, to glad to be with y'all tonight, hey Kira, I do see your little boys Hello there. to all the children hey, out there, Grace hey Grayson, Gregory, Gray Gray Jackson, and Jackson, all the children who might be watching tonight. We see y'all. Hey, by faith. <laughs> by faith, we see y'all. Amen. Hello, Deidre and Sarai. So good and to David, see y'all. David, good to see and you David. as well. So awesome to see y'all. This picture that we're seeing of ourselves <laughs> is so tiny is. <laughs> that my bifocals are even having a hard time getting in on it. <laughs> hey, Allison. So good to see you, darling. Hope you've had a great day. Oh, Amen. It's been a great day. Uh, a little overcast Laura this night. Laura and Alan, so, so good hey, to Alan, see y'all. Hey, Alan and Laura, good We're to see y'all as well. We're continuing to keep you lifted up in prayer. Hey, Jelly. Hey, Jelly. So good to see Nathaniel, you. Nathaniel, Benjamin, Sean, good yes, to see y'all tonight. So good to see y'all. So, Amen. So good to see y'all. We hope everyone has had a wonderful day. We've Amen. had some beautiful sunshine earlier in the day and little showers off and on, but it's it's good to be with you in the house yeah. of the Lord. What an awesome God we serve. It's a little uh, different looking at our tiny picture on our screen tonight. Amen, we don't, but we aren't going to worry about it. We're not going to worry it. about that. Move forward. Hey, y'all can hey, see absolutely. us. We can yeah. see y'all. Here we go. I was telling my honey just a little while ago, I said, is it just my imagination, or does it seem like every Wednesday night it rains a little bit, or on Wednesdays? I believe it does. <laughs> it seems like the last few Wednesdays it's rained. We've gotten like, a little yeah, rain back and forth. I think so, but it's showers of blessings from Absolutely. the Lord to us, and we just thank God for this opportunity to be together. Hey, Joshua, so good to see you tonight. So Hope you're having a good week you. off. If y'all will hit your share buttons, that would be fantastic. Absolutely. You really are blessing <clears throat> so many people with when you do yes, that, you are. and you are given opportunity for this particular service to go to so many, and just releasing that unto the Lord and letting Amen. Him take it where He wants to. That's how Absolutely. we pray. That's the way that we're Father looking God, at uh, as well. Each service belongs to you. It's yes. your service. So yes. what you want to do with it, and where you want to send it, we thank you for doing that. So, hey, Faith, my goodness, hey, Faith. girl, it's so good to see you. Absolutely. So good to see you and Natasha and the family. Amen. We're so happy to see y'all. Glad so y'all are with us. So happy to be together with you tonight. We're just glad for those of you that will be joining us at a later time. Maybe you'll be seeing this at a later time. Welcome to Celebration Family Worship Center. We're so happy that you joined with us tonight. Absolutely. We are a beautiful body of believers from Morganton, North Carolina, and God is doing miraculous things He's right here in our things. midst. It's, it's uh, exciting. Just a, a wonderful body of Christ that we we love dearly. And yes, we Jesus do. Jesus loves us dearly. And Amen. We just are thrilled that you're with us. We uh 
have uh, many uh, ministries that are offered on our uh, website right there on our Facebook page. We have ministries for the children, for our youth, for uh, men's ministry, yes. women's ministry, and then just the services. There are discipleship classes offered. There's uh, abundant life class, nutrition classes that are offered, and just a, a whole variety of beautiful ministry that's offered right here on our Facebook page at this time. We're a family church, and even while we're doing service online in this temporary time, as the roof is being put on the school yes, it and, is. and things are being done there we still want to uh just allow the lord to pour into us and use us and flow out of all of us in the way that Amen. he always has as best we can and he is doing that we hear such wonderful reports the messages that are going out and just touching hearts and lives everywhere and that's all the different ministries that's please right, as you're you. sharing the videos please know that uh, to share those like whenever you're seeing a class when you go on and click on any of the classes hit your share button Amen. because there could be those on the other side of the world that need that class and what's being shared that day and so we just need to be diligent in that and just evangelistic in heart whenever we do it amen that's right amen well uh, we also this this is Pastor Rocky. This is my sweetie, Pastor Amen. Angie. Amen. Well. Amen. And we are going to get started with service. Before we do, we just always share for those that are joining us that may have never been with us before that during this time that we're doing online services, we're able to do our tithes and offerings just through our Facebook page on a small app that we have there at the bottom of the page <coughs> called Easy Tithe, which is a safe and secure way to be able to give in that yes. way as we honor the Lord just in the covenant of giving of our tithes and offerings. Others prefer to mail theirs into Celebration Family Worship Center at P.O. Box 2058, Morganton, North Carolina, North Carolina 28680. Oh. But we want to open with a scripture tonight. We're going to open in prayer and just going to get into some praise and worship. I was talking to Brenda recently and she was sharing how, how many, like many of you, because y'all sent me pictures. Many of you have sent me pictures that y'all are watching us on TV. You're putting us on your screen so that you as a family have more room to spread out. And she said, let me tell you what, Pastor Vanji. She said, now, uh, I have my tambourine. I have my shofar. I have, she has a little drum set. And she said, uh, whenever it's praise and worship time, she said, I'm not sitting on the couch. She said, I'm, I'm a praising God. <laughs> and I said, that is so sweet to hear that. And just however, whatever is working good for your family just to recognize you set things up but recognize that this time is set apart for the yes, Lord we're is. having church amen yes, we're we are. in church we're entering and so into we just presence. thank him for his word which tonight the Lord has a beautiful word to share with us out amen. of Philippians chapter 4 verse 19 and it says my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ, By Christ Jesus. Jesus. And I just want to pray with some of you tonight. There are some, I've been, uh, had some needs shared with me of things you're believing God right. for. And I'm just going to go to the Lord <clears throat> with this particular promise tonight. Father God, your word yes, says, Lord. my Lord, God so shall God. supply all of your needs yes, according Lord. to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Yes. And Father God, your word right there That's is right. letting us know that when we are in need, as you were even showing us last week in the Lord's Prayer, that Father God, our physical needs... Yes. They matter to you. Yes, Things they do. that are needing to be released to yes. us, it matters to you. And so, Father God, for mm. those that have come with those needs tonight, That's some right, have been Lord. shared with us personally, so you know what we're praying about, oh, Lord God. God. So we bring God. those yeah. needs specifically yes, to you, and we thank you we in thank advance, you, Lord, Lord God, yes, for do. releasing those in yes. the name of Jesus. In the mighty and name I of look Jesus. to hear a very good report, yes, good and I thank you for it in Jesus, yes, in name. Jesus mighty name. Paul and Sue, it's so good to see y'all yes. tonight as well. As Amen. Well. 
You want to pray some more, honey, before yeah. we blow the shofar? Father, as we thank come you, to Father. you as well, I thank you, Lord Jesus, yes. that you're moving yes. upon this earth. Amen. I thank you that you are moving upon this nation. Hallelujah. Father God, you are moving right here with us at Celebration. Thank you, Lord. Father, we are a body. Yes. We are a word people. Yes, we stand we are. upon your word. A remnant we take church. you. Yes. yes, we're a remnant church. Hallelujah. And Father God, we stand upon the promises of God. Hallelujah. We stand upon the word of God. We know that you are watching over it and that yes. you will fulfill what you said that you would do. Yes. And Father God, I pray for my brothers, my sisters, my wife, myself, yes. all of our families. Yes. Lord Jesus, we fix our eyes upon Amen. you, the author and the, author and the finisher, finisher of our, of our faith. faith. And Lord, we declare your greatness and we shout your praises. Amen. We thank you. You are driving back Amen. every force of darkness. Yes. And Lord Jesus, yes. your people are being moved by yes. the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I thank you people this night yes. in this service. Yes. Not only will people be born again, yes. people will be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. People will be set free. Yes. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Every yoke, every bondage be destroyed. And Lord Jesus, off of our nation, there is an outpouring. So Lord, have your way. Be exalted and glorified, Lord Jesus. Jesus, in this in service, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 And amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Gonna start Brian blowing the shofar. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hey, Hallelujah. Sarah. Hallelujah, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord hey, Jesus. Hey, Donna. Hey, Cynthia. So good to see you. Hey, Pam. Good to see good you to as see well. Good to see you, Pam. So God good bless to you, see Anita and Paul and children. Oh, yeah. So good to see y'all. <clears throat> We're going to start with a scripture song tonight. Psalm 40. Bye. 
Amen. 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 And in the name of Jesus, that fear is arrested. In the name of Jesus, it has no place in Misty's life. 
Father God, we declare your her. word over her, your healing, powerful word over her that says she's healed. Yes. In yes. the name of Jesus, yes. by your stripes, she's healed. And we thank you, God, that every symptom in mm. her body has to align with the word of God. Yes. In the name of in the Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And that it has to be manifest fully in her body. Yes. In Jesus' holy yes, name. Lord. And we thank you for yes. doing that. And Father, we stand <inaudible> upon your word. You said, rejoice in the Lord always. always. And again, I will rejoice <inaudible> for the Lord is near. And we thank you, Lord, yes. that no one, none of us, Hallelujah. none of us Hallelujah. can be anxious about anything. Hallelujah. But that in all things with prayer and supplication, and all thanksgiving, yes. we make our requests known yes. unto God. Hallelujah. And the peace of God that, that passes all, all understanding. understanding. It guards It'll our guard hearts heart. and yes. our minds in Christ Jesus. Thank you, God. We continue, Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, to lift up Lord Diane. Yes, Lord. We continue to lift yes. up Sue. Yes. We continue to lift up Kevin's dad. Yes, we do, Father Lord. Father God, we are asking you for your healing yes, your to healing be made manifest Lord. in their bodies completely from the top yes. of their heads to the soles, to the of, soles their feet. of their feet. Lord. Everything they've been battling in their yes. own bodies, Lord God, we thank you it is made yes. right by the blood of Jesus. Yes. Again, the stripes that you bore, Lord God, and their bodies line up yes, with, the with the Word of God. the Word of And Lord God, they yes. will give you all the glory, all the, glory and the, all honor, the honor, Lord. and all the praise. Yes, in the mighty, in the name, mighty of name of Jesus. Of Jesus. And we thank Hallelujah. You. We thank you for doing thank that. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. That's right, Misty. By his stripes, I'm healed. Yes, amen. And she amen. claims that healing. Absolutely. Absolutely. As we're learning with the promises of God, we've got to believe the word and we've got to receive it. That's right. There's just something that happens when we receive it. Amen. It's just like uh, I shared many months ago on the lady that went through that crowd and she just touched the hem of the yes. Lord's garment. I mean, she's in the middle of a massive crowd, right. but she just touched the hem of his garment and Jesus knew something had happened. Yes. Why did he know? Because she had come there with purpose mm -hmm. in her heart. She believed, she believed that the Lord would heal her. In fact, her very words as she was making her way in that crowd, not that she said them out loud, but to herself, if I, I can, can just, just get... Mm -hmm. And if I can just touch the yeah. hem yeah. of his garment, his garment, I'll be made whole. Yes, amen. So that is a huge part of it, amen. Misty. I'm so glad to see you reaching out yes, amen. and just receiving that healing That's right. with the faith that God has That's put right. in your heart. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Well, let me tell you, God's got awesome things in store for us tonight. Amen. And yes, he does. Amen. And his word is full of so many wonderful promises, and we thank him for his word. Yes, we and do. And you know, that tonight we're continuing, at least the part that I'm sharing is continuing on in our study and exhortation on the Lord's Prayer. Mm -hmm. Father, we pray for Norm. It appears yes, also that Norm, Sherry, sent in a prayer request, and just as before we go into the message, Father God, we also lift up Norm yes, we bring Floyd to, to you, and we ask you Father, for your strength yes, and your healing, healing power to flow in his body healing from the from top the crown of, his of his head to the head soles, to the of, soles his of his feet, God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, yes. in every way he is made whole. Every and we way. declare Strengthen. that no weapon formed Strengthen. against Norm Foy will prosper. In the name of and Jesus. And every tongue that would try to rise up in judgment against him yes. is condemned yes. because Norm is of the heritage of the Lord. Yes. And we call it done in Jesus' name. In the name. name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So continuing in our study and our exhortation tonight on the Lord's Prayer. Uh, we've been looking at this beloved uh, prayer model that Jesus taught his disciples to further enhance. Uh, and we're asking God to further enhance these principles found yes. in this in this prayer in our own <clears throat> lives. Because we're the church that's here now in 2020. Amen. And this is something he was teaching his disciples back then. And we see that the early church, when we look over in Acts, that it was a Holy Ghost praying church. Hallelujah. And guess what, Celebration? We are a Our Holy, Holy Ghost, Ghost praying church. And yes, we want to grow deeper and stronger in these truths because we got some things to pray about. Yes, Amen? We do. Amen. That's exactly right. 
And certainly as spirit-filled believers, which we are at celebration, we should pray in the spirit on Amen. all occasions. Yes. I know what the Apostle Paul said over in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 18. He said, I pray in the spirit more than you all. So as we're learning this, these principles from the Lord's Prayer, I'm not in any way suggesting that this take the place of us praying in the Spirit. That's, That's right. not what I'm Come saying. On. Come on. But some of this we know we also pray with understanding. Yes, we do. And this comes, sometimes that understanding comes after we've been praying in the Spirit. The Lord will give us the interpretation of what we've right. shared or what we've prayed. Mm -hmm. But then other times, we literally just pray with understanding. And I'd like for you to go with me to the scripture found in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 15, which basically is sharing this very principle. You know, many weeks ago, I shared out of the book of Proverbs, and the scripture that I shared there was, in all you're getting, get understanding. Yes, come on. So with that in mind, look at this scripture found in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 15. And it says, so what shall I do? I pray with my spirit, but I will also pray with my understanding. understanding. Yes. So as we see here, there are two prayers. There is the praying in the Spirit, mm -hmm. and then there is the praying with the understanding. And like I just said, sometimes it's interpreting what we've just prayed in the Spirit. Right. But sometimes it is literally praying in our own understanding. It Amen. also says, I will sing with my Spirit, but I will also sing with my understanding. I love it when we sing in the Spirit. Amen. And then also, as we have just done, we have sang with our understanding. Yes. Amen. And the Lord just wants to take us into a deeper level of understanding the Lord's Prayer. Because there's some magnificent, magnificent nuggets yes. of powerful truths that He wants operational in our lives. So I want to go with that. I want to take us right there. I want to go in prayer for that specifically. Father God, we just come to you tonight. And we're asking you yes, to Lord. take us to this place yes. of deeper understanding. Father God, we're asking you to reveal more and more yes, to Lord us Jesus. and take us deeper Lord in this. Father, you taught through your son Jesus, you taught your disciples these truths. They wanted to learn and we, yes. we at Celebration, we want to learn. Lord, Lord, we're Lord. your disciples and we're here today yes. on this earth. We want to be armed and ready mm. to pray on all occasions. Yes, and with these principles renewed and strengthened in our hearts and in our lives, we know that we can go deeper in our yes. prayer walks with you, yes, God. Lord. So Lord, we Lord, thank Lord. you Lord, for doing Lord. this in our hearts. Thank in you, the, name of, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yes. So our study and our exhortation tonight is entitled, Forgive Our Debts. And to get a full understanding of what the Lord is sharing here, because like I just said, we've got to understand what's being taught. To get a full understanding, we have got to see what context was Jesus sharing all of this. Amen. In. Where was he at? What was going on when he was talking about this? Because now when we hear of debts, our minds, they naturally can bend towards financial debts. That, oh, okay, God might be talking about some financial debts here. Right. Because in America, we live in a world, and in the world, we live in a place where there's tons of credit card debt. Mm -hmm. It's continually compounded with interest every month. And until this pandemic, you would turn on the news and you would hear of how big the school debt and college debt. Right. You were hearing how students were coming out with so much debt that it was becoming a big issue in lives. Mm -hmm. Also in this last decade and even more, you turn on the TV and there are lots of commercials of companies that are like trying to come alongside and help people get out of debt. You see these commercials of uh, companies that are saying, let's help you consolidate your debt. Right. And we've seen that happen. So when we hear debt, we could think of that. But to get the understanding of what Jesus is talking about when he is talking to his disciples specifically at this point in the prayer, we've got to find out what kind of debt he was talking about when he said, 
forgive us our debts. Yes. And while I mentioned everything that above up there, that's very distressing to us as Americas. It's highly unlikely that any of them or anybody that's even watching tonight who's ever been in debt, you've never had to go to prison for being in debt. But that was not the case when Jesus was sharing this prayer with his that's disciples. Right. He was teaching them something very relevant to the times that they were living in that had come down to them through the Roman Empire. You see, back then, prisons were not generally filled with criminals. Prisons were instead populated with debtors. Yes. If you got in debt back mm -hmm. then, you went to prison. That's right. You didn't uh, call up the company and say, well, let's see if we can consolidate this no. debt and work on it. No, they had what was called debtor's prison. Yes. So you got to have that in mind when you're hearing the Lord teach his disciples this phrase in this prayer. Forgive us our debts. Now, in those days, if you were a criminal, you might get executed or have to serve other punishments for your crime. But if you were in prison for being a debtor, now this is for those that were debtors, you were not allowed to leave prison Come on. until that debt had been paid. Right. So here's the deal. Just as we've been sharing in some of our last messages on the power of our decisions, right? That sometimes decisions that we make, they don't they're not just attached to us, but they reach out and they're touching yes. people we never intended. That was the case of the debtors in debtors prison. Yes, it was. Because not only could you not get out of that prison until that debt was paid, your family was expected yes. to cough up the money, yes. get out there and work, and keep making payments mm -hmm. until that debt was paid. Right. So do you see how serving in a prison in a time like that, it's not only the individual who was in debt personally. Right. It literally extended through those prison walls out to their family and had them in bondage because it was a system that had been put in place that was created to put pressure on families yes, of the incarcerated debtor to cause them to work and get enough money together to free their loved one mm -hmm. from prison. So this had a far-reaching effect yes. beyond just the one that was in prison. It did. And so basically, not only the debtors in prison, but by extension, the whole family. And so at the time Jesus was sharing this, he was sharing it with that context of debt in mind. And it was a matter of life and death. And here he is teaching his disciples. He's there before the Lord. They've asked him, Jesus, please teach us how to pray. And he's gotten to this part of the prayer. Forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors. We need the understanding of the word debt he's talking about. And as we've seen, it is definitely as attached to a very serious offense. Mm -hmm. And with the corresponding serious punishment, to be forgiven a debt was no little thing. No. When they heard those words, Jesus praying those words, Father, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. They were hearing that prayer with right. this context in mind. They knew that it was an act of extravagant mercy. It was. Are you hearing that tonight, yes. church? Last week we talked about how through the phrase, give us this day our daily bread, Jesus was acknowledging our most urgent physical, physical need. need. But now, with this portion of the petition, forgive us our debts, Jesus is emphasizing our most urgent spiritual yes, need. Is. If you look at it right here, he addresses these two issues back to back. They're like two bookends on either side. Mm -hmm. You can't have one without the, without other. the other. You know, my dad shared something throughout the years of ministry that I've always loved. I dearly loved it when he shared it. I've always loved it, and I always will. He said, we serve a God of balance. Mm -hmm. I want right. to say that again. We serve, serve a God, God of balance. 
And right here at the beginning of this prayer, we see another display of this balance. Yes. The Lord is addressing our physical needs and immediately he is right behind following up with our spiritual needs with the same great urgency. Mm. What is our greatest spiritual need? Or to word it a little differently, what is our greatest spiritual debt? We know that as sinners, we stand before God condemned, rightly deserving of his wrath. Only God's forgiveness can clear our guilt and establish a meaningful relationship between us That's and right. the Lord. Absolutely. That's what he gives us. But what should we be giving him for the debt that we owe? Come on. We should be giving him our lives. Ourselves. We should be giving him our lives, and we should be giving him our obedience right. as we walk according to his word and do what he has said, because that is what he is right Amen. to do. Amen. Can we do that? I Come believe on. we can. Yes, we can. We can do it through the power of the gospel and the finished atoning mm. work of the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ. And the Lord's Prayer is a gospel prayer. Yes, it is. And you say, well, what do you mean by that, Pastor Vanji? I mean that it, the Lord's Prayer is a good news prayer. Yes. God has come to give good news. Can you imagine the context of those words? Uh, forgive us our debts and how it's being heard by these disciples in that day when so many were come going on. to debtor's prison. Imagine it being heard by people who knew if my debt doesn't get forgiven, I'm going to prison yes. and by extension, I'm going to imprison my family. Right. These were powerful, powerful words, not only in their lives, but in their families' lives. And can we imagine how a debtor would feel if someone showed up at the prison door and said to them, Hey, you can go home now. Your debt has been paid in full. Yes. That gives us a new context to look at this phrase in the Lord's Prayer. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, it does. Now, over the years, one part of this prayer has been misconstrued. And I want to look oh, yeah. at it briefly tonight. It's the part that says... Forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors. There are many that have taught that the only way we are forgiven is because we have forgiven our debtors. Mm -hmm. That is a wrong interpretation, interpretation of that phrase. Because it suggests and puts an emphasis on, a, on forgiveness occurring because of works because that of we've work. done. Right. Absolutely wrong. Nope. Basically, that is saying that forgiveness is only activated if and as we forgive our debtors. Right. But that's not the gospel message. Nope. The gospel message is that God, who must claim full penalty for our sin, he both demands that penalty and he provides it himself. That's right. It's through the Lord. His Self-substitution is Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. whose perfect obedience and perfectly accomplished atonement on the cross purchased all the necessary, what was necessary for our right. salvation yeah. and our forgiveness. Let's listen to how the Apostle Paul words it over in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. He says, For our sake he made him to be sin." who knew no, no sin, sin, that in him we might become the righteousness of God. And that's the Apostle Paul letting us know by writing this under the inspiration of the mm -hmm. Holy Ghost that under no uncertain circumstances or terms do we ever earn the righteousness of no, God no, in Christ through our own works. Not even the work of forgiving someone. Come on. Absolutely not. But rather, it is freely given to us when we believe the gospel. For us to think that we're going to be able to walk in forgiveness without the Lord Jesus Christ is as silly as a branch that falls off the That's tree right. outside in your yard and my yard and insists that it's going to continue to live laying right there on the ground, completely detached 
from the life source. Right. The same is true with forgiveness. If we think we're going to be people of forgiveness, apart from being attached to the king of forgiveness, we right. are fooling ourselves. You're it right. will not happen. It won't happen. It will not happen. Look in Romans chapter 3, verses 23 and 24, which declares, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by His grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Amen. So for us to be able to forgive... It's never achieved through our good works, church. Come on. Never. Actually, if it says we are to cling to the sacrifices of Jesus Christ, and that is the way that we will be able to walk and forgive in the way that he intended. And how does it come? It comes by us believing his yeah. word. Yeah. You know, we've been talking a lot lately about how Naomi believed the report of the Lord when she heard that God was giving bread back in Judah. Mm -hmm. The importance of what we believe cannot be emphasized enough. And that's something that's been stressed as we've been going through this teaching on the Lord's Prayer. We have got to be theologically sound yes, we do. in what we believe, church. That's right. Amen. We must. What we believe when we accept the Lord Jesus Christ must be theoretic, theologically correct. It must be from the Word of God. Amen. It must be His Word. And it is produced in our lives by a lifelong repentance journey. Yes, it is. And a new life of holiness. Amen. That is how it is displayed in us. Yes. It's not a one time I go down to the altar, thank you Jesus for forgiving my sins, then I go live however I want That's to right. the rest of my life. That is not a disciple of the Lord Jesus That's Christ. Right. It's a walk. It is a journey. It is a walk. Amen. Yeah. And so the Lord, He gives us a new life that responds to His Word. Yes, how sir. do we know we're saved? We start responding to what to we word. see here in the yes. Word of God. We, we start obeying yes. what we see here in the Word mm -hmm. of God. He gives us new desires for our old desires. He gives us the desires for the things of God. His Word is written and His law, it is on our minds and it's yes. in our heart. He literally writes it. On our minds and on our hearts, our according to Hebrews chapter 8, verse 10. He also, in Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26, he even puts his spirit within Amen. us. Yes, we become new creatures. We become new creatures. Amen. The old, the old, old has passed away. So, yes, good works, they are a part of our life. Mm -hmm. They are a part of our life, and they accompany true salvation. Yes. But they are only the fruit of salvation. That's right. They are never the root of salvation. No, not at all. Never be deluded in that way in thinking that. Forgiveness is released from the Lord. We are His children, and the way we're able to walk That's in right. forgiveness is because He is the King he of is forgiveness. The king. Yes. And who are we being conformed into the image of? The We've Lord. been talking about it. We're being conformed into His image more and more every day. We're becoming like the King of whose kingdom has come to this earth. Amen. Let's look at what it says in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10. It says, for by grace, that's Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10. For by grace... You have been saved through faith. This is not your own doing. It is a gift of God, not a result of works so that one may boast. We are His workmanship, yes. created in yes. Christ Jesus to do good, good works. works. And what kind of good works are we going to do? Mm. The good works that He has yes. prepared, prepared for beforehand us. that we should walk in. That's Hallelujah. Right. Amen. So what is Jesus teaching his disciples when he says, forgive us our debts? If you've got your pen, write down here. Number one. Number one, the Lord is teaching us that we are all sinners in need of forgiveness. 
and the Lord has indeed put his finger on and he has identified our deepest spiritual problem. And it's nothing less than personal rebellion against a holy God. And the problem is spelled with three letters. S-I-N. That's right. Sin. It's a sin problem. We've re we have transgressed his law and commandments and we need forgiveness. That's right. That's, That's the, the first thing. Number two, this is what Jesus is teaching. He's teaching his disciples that not only have we sinned, but that he has come to give us a hope for come forgiveness. On. That's right. That makes a whole lot more sense when you realize that when he is teaching this prayer, forgive us our debts, he is talking to people who have to live in debtor's prison right. if they start accumulating debt. Amen. We don't even think of anything like that. There's nobody going to prison today for having credit card debt. Nope. You don't see, oh, we're going to come arrest you. You've run debt up. So, okay, here you go. Off to jail you come go. On. I mean, it would be in the most extreme right. situation. But not in this day. Not when the Lord is teaching this prayer. That's right. And isn't he saying something spiritually to us? Mm -hmm. That we are in prison You're until in prison we have asked forgiveness That's right. from the Lord Jesus Christ. And not only for us, but look at there, you know, a scripture that we love dearly as out of Joshua. As for me and In my, my house, house, we, we will, will serve, serve the Lord. Lord. Why do you think Joshua said that? Because again, in this prayer, the debt not only applied to the one who had accumulated the debt, it attached itself to that entire family. You're standing in the gap for your family That's tonight. Right. You are a person who walks in forgiveness That's tonight. Right. Amen. And you are able to share that forgiveness with That's your right. own family. How do we receive this hope in our desperate state? By coming boldly to the throne of grace and asking Him That's right. and receiving His That's right. forgiveness. Amen through the work that he did on the cross. He is our hope. That's right. And he wanted that hope to be conveyed to his disciples. Yes, absolutely. Number three, Jesus is teaching in this passage in the Lord's Prayer that God is willing. He is willing to forgive sin. In fact, God desires to forgive sin so much that over in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4, this is what his word says. God desires for all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of truth. And over in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, it says, The Lord is not slow to his promises, well, as some count slowness, but is patient towards you, not willing that any should perish, mm -hmm. but that all should reach repentance. Well, so the Lord showed me through this little example. He said, Vanjie, when you're keeping the boys, or even when Christian was little, and children are little, just as parents, and you know they're outside playing, and they've gotten all muddy, and they've gotten all dirty, what do you want to do when they come in? You want to clean them. You want to bathe right. them and get them cleaned get and them refreshed. Cleaned yeah. Why do you want to do it? You've got the resource to do it. You have the water. Mm -hmm. You have the soap. You've got everything needed. Right. It's in your power to do it. By the same token, the Lord Jesus Christ, He sees us as His children. And He's yes. not looking at any muddy dirt on the nope. outside of us. But anything that would be on the inside, on the inside. harming His child, because that's what sin does. It. it harms a child. Mm -hmm. The Lord wants that to be forgiven, forgiven and yeah. thoroughly cleansed. Yes. I Absolutely. said, thank you, Jesus. I can see it. Hallelujah. Come on. So he wants us, as much as we want to release these good things on our children, the Lord wants to release Amen. them on us. Number four, what is the Lord teaching in this phrase, forgive us our debts? In this prayer, he is teaching us this, that the kingdom of God is come to this earth, and guess what? It's radically different from any Come other on. kingdom Hallelujah. in existence. 
There are things that characterize kingdoms. The kingdom of this world is characterized by selfishness, ambition, self-promotion, and cruelty. And true forgiveness Amen. has no real foothold in the kingdoms of man. But now let's look at what's characterized in God's kingdom. God's kingdom is characterized by mercy, by mm -hmm. kindness, by compassion, and by forgiveness. Come on. And the only reason that we're included in God's kingdom is by his act of forgiving us. And as the result, we are now able to forgive one another. Remember, we're being conformed into his image. That's right. The Come image on. of the one whose kingdom we belong. And so just like his love sets us apart and it makes us different from the rest of the world, and that's how we're known is by our love one for another. Yes. Well, also, as people of God, we are also set apart because of the way we're able to forgive one another. And it is only done through Christ through Jesus. Christ. Yes. We are set apart from the rest of the world in this way. In the kingdom of God, there's no place for malice or unchecked bitterness. Right. We are citizens of his kingdom That's right. Amen. because he has forgiven us. And as citizens yes. of his kingdom, we forgive one another. Come on. Say glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. He sets the tone for his kingdom. And we're part of his kingdom and how things should be done. And if you didn't realize that's what you signed up for when you got saved, you might be in a big reality check right now. But don't worry. Don't worry. Come on. God's kingdom is the kingdom you want yes. to be in. Amen. I can tell you that right now. Yes. And he has set up an order of his kingdom. And his forgiveness is part of his that's kingdom. That's right, it is. And when we submit to the Lord and his kingdom, and we're citizens thereof, we're not only able to ask God for forgiveness, Church, we're able to forgive our debtors. That's right. We're able to be That's forgivers. Right. And again, it isn't because of uh, God. Uh, you know, it's not because of anything that we do. It's not the works that we do That's in right. forgiving. But it's because God forgave yes. us. Yes. Because he forgave us, we're able to forgive. Yes. And that would make grounds of acceptance with our God. It's not our own works. It's not, it's simply the grace of God. And what does that affirm in our lives? This is what it affirms to us. That when we experience God's forgiveness, and can you say, can, can you raise your we hand? Experience. If you've yeah. ever experienced Amen. God's forgiveness. Absolutely. If we call ourselves believers, yes. which I'm a believer, you're, you're a believer, yeah. celebration, you're believers. We can all raise yeah. our hands yes. and Amen. say, absolutely. I have experienced I have forgiveness, experienced it, yes. the forgiveness of God, then we are fundamentally transformed That's right. because of that experience into a people who are called a forgiving people. That's right, amen. Say, I'm a forgiving person. I'm a forgiving person. Because Jesus forgave me. Because Jesus forgave me. Do you know the way that you're going to know, one of the ways that you're going to know that you have experienced the forgiveness of God? is by how you're able to forgive others. That's right. That's going to be evidence to you. Hey, if you've ever wondered, have I really received forgiveness from the Lord? Oh, test a test mm -hmm. meter for you will be when you're able to when say, you're able to forgive others. Hey, I was able to forgive. Yes. And that is why it cannot be done apart from the Lord Jesus Christ any more than a branch on the tree breaking off and That's laying right. on the ground would say, oh, look, my leaves are still green. I'm laying here on the ground. I'm mm -hmm. detached from the tree now, but oh, yeah, I'm still alive. Look how green my leaves are. It's a lie. That's right. It is. It has been cut off been cut from off. the life source. And for us to think we're going to be people of forgiveness without being connected to the life source of forgiveness, we are deceiving ourselves. Yes, we are. So if you're having trouble forgiving, let me tell you how it can be instantaneously remedied. Get yourself back in fellowship with God. Get in fellowship Get with the Lord. Get into His presence yes. and ask Him, the source of the one who gives all forgiveness, to forgive you. Yes. And as He forgives you, He is going to enable you to forgive right. others. Amen? Amen. Amen. The Word of God says, 
You remember how Peter, he's like, uh, Lord, you know, what if my brother does something? Here, he thought it was big. Mm -hmm. He said it over there in uh, Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 and 22, right. and I'm paraphrasing. God, uh, should I just forgive him seven times? And, and he thought that was pretty big. And let me tell you, right here tonight, we might all be saying, oh, yeah, that, that actually, to have to forgive somebody seven times, right. uh, that would seem pretty big in our book. Let me hear, tell you what here Jesus said. He said, uh, I do not say to you seven times, but Jesus took it up. He said, seventy-seven seven times. <laughs> and so God's forgiveness, it always goes to a greater number than we've ever imagined. His love always goes right. to a greater place than we've ever imagined. Yes. His forgiveness always, always goes to a greater place than we've yes. ever imagined. And that's the kind of forgiveness that he wants us to walk in. Amen. He wants us to be just like Ruth, where we're willing to give up our address and take up a take permanent up address With as him. citizens of yes. the kingdom of God yes. and say, because my king of kings is a king of forgiveness, that's right. I'm going to be a child a and child a citizen who walks in yes. forgiveness. So tonight, if that's you and you want to be a child who walks in forgiveness, God wants you to. Yes, He does. If you desire it, I can tell you right now, Jesus desires it. Just like a child, we take our children when they're tiny and they need to be bathed after they've gotten all dirty right. and muddy. The Lord Jesus has paid the supreme price yes, for our forgiveness and He wants to give it to us. Yes, He does. We just have to ask. We have to ask. And then we receive. Yes. Absolutely. And then we're able to And then we move it. forward, yes. In the name of Jesus. Yeah, absolutely. Amen. What a beautiful teaching. Amen, amen, you know, amen. As you were sharing forgive that teaching. Forgive us our debts, Forgive Lord, us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. I was reminded at the very beginning, when Jesus came out of the wilderness, yeah. him going yeah. into the... Yes. Yeah, and he started yes. reading yes. from the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. Yes, he did. And he was reading about the Spirit of the Lord being upon him. Amen. To give recovery of sight to the blind. Amen. Hello. To give to preach good news to the captive. Yes. Come on. Yes. But it also says that he is to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Amen. Prior to Jesus forgiving sin, dying on the cross for us, yeah. the only time that you could be set free from indebtedness was at the year of Jubilee. Jubilee. And then all indebtedness was wiped out. Yes. And that was the only way you could get set free. Yes. The only way your family could be, get set free. But yes. Jesus said... To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Yes. To proclaim the year of Jubilee. Yes. And it says, and he rolled up the scroll, handed it back to the attendant, and said, today this is fulfilled in your midst. Amen. He so, fulfilled it. Yes. Hallelujah. So Jesus is he Jubilee. Is. He is. And Jubilee has been going on since Jesus' death, Amen. burial, and resurrection. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. What an Amen. awesome, Amen. awesome Amen. teaching on we forgiveness. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, <clears throat> you may be out there tonight and you may be saying, you know what, I need forgiveness of my sins. Amen. I need to ask Jesus to come into my life yes. to forgive me. Yes. Because I'm at this place, I don't know the Lord. Yes. And today he's speaking to my heart. Today you he's don't have me. any hope. You Jesus don't have hope. wants you to have hope. He will absolutely forgive you. I, all of us, yes. all of us on this earth, we know the same thing. We know what hopelessness is. Yes. I, I was hopeless in drug addiction and alcoholism. But the Lord came and he set me free. Amen. He came and he set me free. Amen. February 26th, I received my year of Jubilee. Yes. And I want you to know, today can be your day Amen. of receiving the Lord's forgiveness yes. and you walking free yes. from what has held you bondage. In bondage, yes. Yes. 
The scripture says that if we confess with our mouths that Jesus Christ is Lord yes. and we believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead, we'll yes. be born again. Amen. So right now I want to pray. Amen. And now's your opportunity to pray with us. Yes. I'm going to share further, but Amen. I want you to pray right Thank now. You, if that's Father. you, say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I know you're the Son of God. I know you're the Son of God. I know you came. I know you came. To this earth. To this earth. And you died. And you died. For my sins. For my sins. I thank you. I thank you for taking my punishment for taking my punishment upon yourself upon yourself I know that you freely gave your life I know that you freely gave your life and that you were buried in a tomb and that you were buried in a tomb but on the third day but on the third day you rose from the dead you rose from the dead so right now so right now my life my life my sins forgiven my sins forgiven and I walk in freedom I walk in freedom from this day forward from this day forward I will serve you I will serve you with all my my heart with all my heart in Jesus name in Jesus name amen. amen 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 you are a debtor who just has been that's set right free. you've just been set free amen. hallelujah amen and we would love for you to get involved in our discipleship classes offered by Larry and Christina Foy yes and just to plug in if you need a Bible we want let to get know. a Bible to you. Please let us know. We want to get it into your hands. Amen. The Lord, he spoke to me and told me that I needed to go uh, on this Wednesday night to go and share with you something. I want you to hear this passage of scripture. It's out of the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter number one. Amen. In verse number three, it says, blessed is he or she, blessed is the one that readeth and that they hear this words of this prophecy yes. and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. Amen. Amen. I know uh, ever since I've been saved, I, I, I've had this hunger in my heart to know what is ahead, to know what's yeah. going to happen. And it's been so burning in my heart over the past 37 years that I've just kept digging into it and reading and whatnot. And the Lord spoke to me this very day and told me, he said, I asked him, I said, Lord, why is it that, that there is such a fear over Revelation and the book of Revelation, the prophecy of Revelation? Mm -hmm. And the Lord just spoke to me and he said, because my people, they have not received understanding. Man, that makes sense. Mankind yeah. looks at this book because yeah. it's written in a way that we don't understand, especially in the day in which we're living. Amen. Because we're trying to see, my goodness, it talks about dragons and it talks about the, all these things. And I, I, I don't see these things. Yeah. But in the day that John the Revelator, in the day that the John the Beloved, yeah. he was living, those were things that the people believed in. Yeah. They believed that dragons were real. They believed that all these different things, serpents coming out of the earth, they believed all these things were real. So as we look at this, we want to give understanding to what's happening. Uh, I mean, it's amazing uh, because over these years, I've, I've done a lot of studying in all the prophetic words. But when we hear of a dragon with fire coming out of its mouth or, or we hear of flames coming out of a being, oh, yeah. we don't understand that. But in our modern understanding we can see these things yeah. we can understand these things like but, through a uh, like a rocket ship or like yes, a like through a rocket, rocket ship, ship or a, a, plane a plane flying or those type things of things like, oh, okay. we can understand yeah. and have understanding yeah but yet i want to share with you come to the book of revelation i've entitled this uh, this message tonight uh a door standing open Amen. We're staying with those doors. But a Hallelujah. door was open. Amen. So in Revelation chapter number four, look with me, if you will. Uh, I'm going to be both in the King James and the Amplified. It says, after this, I looked and behold, a door was standing open in heaven. Amen. And the first voice which I had heard addressing me, like the calling of a war trumpet, said, come up here and I will show you what must take place in the future. Yeah. We, we must understand that John, he's saying, 
he's hearing because John, none of this is John's wording. John was told to write down what you see and what you hear. Now, at the beginning, it says, I, John, was on the Isle of Patmos. That, that's John saying that. But here in chapter number four, it says, after this. After what? My wife shared, and I know uh, in the beginning of uh, the end of March, first part of April, I began sharing out of the book of Revelation. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Chapters one, two, three, and a reading in there, an understanding, and you shared just a few weeks ago, yeah, out of two three. of the churches yes. in Philadelphia and, and Laodicea. Laodicea. Yes. And this is immediately following what the Lord spoke to the church at Laodicea. Mm. So it says, after this, uh, after, so after this, he's spoken to the churches. After he has spoken to the churches, yes. it says, after this. Now, there's some things that I want us to understand before we dive deeper. Okay. The things that uh, to do with the consummation of the age, that's what this is. Chapters 4 and chapters 5 are the introduction and the background of this colossal sweep of uh, prophetic events that are getting ready to happen. Yeah. Chapter 4 gives us an introduction. Chapter 5 takes us a little bit deeper so that we can understand because coming out of chapter 5, the prophetic events start rapidly happening. Yes. Now, we also must understand that these things are given so that what is spoken in the prophetic events that as they're spoken, that the rest of this revelation can be given, but yet we understand where John was, what John was seeing, the vantage point that John was at. Now, John Walvoord, who I love reading John Walvoord, I love studying John Walvoord, he, he has one of the best books on, on Revelation. It's called The Revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. It's, you can get it in paperback through Amazon. Uh, it actually came out, I, I know, uh, through Moody Press in 66 was when I first uh, saw the publication of it. And John Walvoord, he said, quote, One of the principal reasons for confusion in the study of the book of Revelation has been the failure to grasp if Revelation has no chronological structure and is merely a symbolic presentation of morals, the moral truth is prophet, the prophetic is significantly, it's reduced and minimalized. Mm -hmm. In this day and age that we are living, what has been spoken, the things that we have built foundation, the things that our nation has built, been built upon, these things are being viewed totally from a secular point of view. Thus, it minimizes what has been spoken. So this revelation, we must understand, we must have the spiritual ears to hear, yes. the eyes to see, yes. as we saw in chapters one, two, and three. Yes. We must have ears to hear, and eyes to see. And part of what I'm wanting to do is giving you some understanding so that as the Lord starts directing and guiding, you can go into Revelation yeah. as it's shared from Revelation. Yeah. We can have a better understanding of what's happening and what is unfolding. Many people did not receive Revelation because they could not fathom it in the day that they were living. Yes. It did not make sense. I know the Lord gave me dreams back uh, after I got saved. Yes. And the dreams that God gave me, I know that they were from God. Yes. They, they are being fulfilled in this very day yes. on the streets of America, yes. in the streets of the world. These things are happening. Yes. So in this day in which these people were living prior before us, our heritage, yeah. they could not understand. So people naturally did not study the prophetic word of Revelation. Mm -hmm. Now, 
There is, and I love this, there is a writer, a theologian named C.A. Blanchard. C.A. Blanchard said, what will follow the church age? So what we are seeing is he says, after this, he's saying, after the church age. Yeah. That's what the Lord Jesus is saying. After the church age has ended. Yeah. So Blanchard says, what will follow the church age? Eventually, in some form or other, the time of tribulation. Why must the time of tribulation follow the church age? Because when the church has been withdrawn from the earth, while Satan, godless governments, and childless, excuse me, Christless religions remain in the world, there must be tribulation. And such a time of tribulation as the world has never known in the mixed state which has been from the beginning until now. Wow. From the fourth chapter through the 19th, speaking generally, there seems to be an account of this time of trouble. Wow. So as we're entering in and reading and doing some studying yeah. out of the fourth chapter, we must understand the church has been removed. My father-in-law, Pastor Roland, he, he's always spoke of the gap between three and four is the church being removed from the earth. Yes. Jesus said, after this. Yes. So it says, look, after this, I looked and behold, a door standing open. He had to go through the door. And the first voice that he heard was the voice that he heard at the beginning. And he heard it a like the calling of a war trumpet. Amen. It sounded like a war trumpet coming up here, and I will show you what must take place in the future. Yes. When we understand, as we go a little bit further into this, it talks about the rumblings and the lightning coming from the throne. Yeah. It says, at once I came under the Holy Spirit's power, and behold, a throne stood in heaven with one seated on the throne. John didn't get transported. John started seeing in the Spirit wow. by the Holy Ghost. Yes. Heaven was opened up. We hey, are everybody. Back. We're, We're going to give back. you a second to reconnect. We're, we've had some bad weather. Yeah, we're having, we've been having a storm we've here. a storm here. We've heard that there are storms in others. Others of you have also... Been going through some storms, a little bit of bad yeah, weather going on. Let us on. know as y'all can start. So we're just going to take a minute, and if you're able to get back on. We hope that everyone, that you're able to be there. I know. Hey, Sherry. Hey, Sherry. Good to see y'all. Lenny Snell. Okay, we're back we're just, as well. I think, I think you should just continue. Let's just take a few minutes. They're back because they were like really... Okay, really? in the book of Re where we're going, we're going to go back to Revelation 4, and I'm just going to share a couple of things with you. Just um, uh, send the, your share button, and we'll go back. And then we'll... We'll go back. Uh, I do want to share this one thing with you. Live again, because the weather, it just, this is the first time since we've been doing services where it literally cut off on its own. Yes. But there was a lot of lightning, and thunder going on different things like that different so, things that might have been part of it i don't know right uh in revelation chapter four where it's uh speaking here and it's talking about the four living creatures and it says and whenever the living creatures offer glory and honor and thanksgiving to him who sits on the throne who lives forever and ever through the eternities of the eternities Amen. it says in verse 10 the 24 elders, the members of the heavenly Sanhedrin, which according as we shared a moment ago, I personally believe that that is the representation of the body of Christ. Amen. We know in King David and Solomon's time in the temple, there were 24 priesthoods because they could not all minister at the same time. Mm -hmm. So it's representative and believing that it's those who have lived righteous, those who have received Jesus Christ, Amen. that it's the 24 elders, 
And it says, the 24 elders, the members of the heavenly Sanhedrin, fall upon their faces before him who is yeah. seated on the throne, and they worship him who lives forever and ever, and they throw down their crowns. That's another reason for believing that it's the believers. The crowns yes. before the throne, crying, Worthy are you, our Lord and God, Amen. to receive the glory and the honor and the dominion. You created all things, and by your will yes. they were brought into being and were created. Amen. Now, it says that when they that the four living creatures do this day and night. Amen. So if they do this day and night, then that means the Sanhedrin, the 24, they live on their faces yes. before the very throne of God. Yes. And brothers and sisters, I tell you what, if that's what we're going to do for eternity, I know that this is a time because God's preparing us and God's telling us Amen. it's face time. Amen. It's face time with God, Amen. but it's also us being in that giving him glory and giving him honor, yes. bowing before him. Yes. And we're to worship him day and night yes. as it is in heaven. May it be here on this earth. Amen. And that's the God's desire. So this was about where I was going to get to tonight, but I wanted to share that remainder with you Amen. because in this time that God has us separated out, I believe that there is a very specific thing God's called us to. Amen. And that's not only to pray in our in the spirit and in our understanding, but to get down before God and just get face to face. Hallelujah. To give him all the glory and the honor because the lamb who was slain. Amen. Took away the sins of the world. He's worthy of all glory and honor. Amen. Yes. Amen. Well, yes. I, as we're getting ready to close tonight, I know that we've given that opportunity for people to come to salvation, Amen. for people to give their hearts, to give their lives Amen. to hey, the Brenda. Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And now we want to have this opportunity where we want to pray over our tithes and offerings. But we also want to pray over the, our essential workers. Yes. We want to pray protection. Remember, keep anointing your doors. Keep praying and pleading the blood over your household, yes. over your family members. Also, asking God to station his angels all around you, all Amen. around your property. Amen. All the things that he has given us in life, we give it back to him and ask God to keep us in his ways. Amen. Amen. Yes. So right now we want to pray over our tithes and offerings. So pray with me, if you will. Say, you, oh, Father, we come before you. We thank you, Father, for who you are. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for dying on the cross for us. Father, you love us so much. You sent your only begotten son to take away the sins of the world. We thank you that we have been brought out of darkness into the marvelous light of Jesus. And, Father, we have surrendered our lives to you. Father, we ask you to be glorified in our lives. Lord yes. Jesus, be lifted up and exalted. Yes. We thank you that you've made us children of the living God, but you've also made us join heirs with you in, in your, your inheritance. inheritance. And Amen. right now, gathered around your throne in Revelation chapter 5, are men and women from every nation, every tongue, every tribe, and every kindred. Yes. And they're worshiping you in spirit, spirit. and they're and worshiping you in truth. And if that's what heaven looks and sounds like, that's what we, the church, ought to look and sound like. So we call the nations to your kingdom. We call them from the north, the south, the east, and the west. We call to the four corners of the earth, give up the lost souls to your kingdom, Lord Jesus. And celebration, the doors of celebration are thrown wide open. And Father God, it's a place for the nations to gather. And we come together in spirit and truth. We come together with glad and sincere hearts. Amen. And Lord Jesus, we pray continually for the third great awakening yes. in our nation. Amen. Lord, pour out your spirit. We pray for those in authority over us. We pray for President Donald Trump, Vice President Mike Pence, 
Yes. All those in the Congress, the Cabinet, the Supreme Court. Yes. We pray for all those in state authority, yes. Governor Cooper yes. and all the other governors. We pray for those in local authorities. Amen. We pray, Lord Jesus, Amen. them and their households yes. be born again. Yes. We thank you. They'll be baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. The word of God be a lamp unto their feet, a light unto their path. And may we all walk a highway of holiness together. We don't want to just hear the word. We want to act upon the word. Reap the harvest of the word. Right now we give. It's given. Good measure. Pressed down. Shaken together. Running over. Men and women pour into our bosom so that we can give again. We declare us and our households born again. We declare yokes be lifted. Burdens be removed. Lord Jesus, Hallelujah. we pray for our essential workers. Yes. We pray for those who are out on the front lines every day. Lord Jesus, the blood of Jesus be applied to them. We call them and their families to be saved. Hallelujah. Father God, I thank you. We declare souls, 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 souls to the souls, kingdom of God. Souls, yes. And we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor, honor. in Jesus' name. In the name of Amen. Jesus, in, the name in the name of, of Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord Hallelujah. Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And what I started seeing before we were disconnected as it was starting to happen is I saw the hunger and the thirst for righteousness coming from the words of those that it had gotten cut off from. Okay. Saying they wanted to hear. All right. Praise God, God is bringing us to a place <coughs> that we hunger and we thirst for righteousness. Yes. We've never been used to a time whenever it couldn't just be just right at our fingertips. Either we're right, right there in service or whatever. Or we've been doing it this way and it just flows and there's mm -hmm. no interruption. But we just have to be persistent in Him. That's right. We have to be those people who will hunger and thirst for righteousness. Amen. In the name Amen. of Jesus. And when we do get off tonight, you just share for them to come back and hear the rest of that. Uh, a pastor's message on the second portion that was given. They'll be able to go there. Yeah. And as we know, the word of the Lord will not, not return, return void. void. But it will accomplish what he sends His to do. His word will accomplish what he sent Amen. forth to do. And you know, I encourage each one of you as you're in the word, God's, he's pulling, he's peeling the layers back. Yes. He's making things known. He, he told Daniel that things would be hidden until the appointed time. Yes. And brothers and sisters, we're in the appointed time. Yes. It's the time of God's favor. It's yes. the time that in all of our getting, we have to get understanding. Amen. We have to get understanding of what God's saying to us. When you opened tonight and you said you were taking us to the book of Revelation, and you said you posed the question to the Lord, Lord, why are people, why are even God's people sometimes so scared to go to this book? And you said the Lord spoke to you and said, it's because they don't have understanding. They don't have understanding. When you said that, the Spirit of God spoke to me and he said, it's just like the fear that has been released upon mm -hmm. the world at this time over COVID-19. Yes. Now this is what he said. Mm -hmm. The reason there's so much fear is because there's little understanding. Right. And it has produced great fear. Great fear. And I was like, wow. But then like what you were sharing, the more, and just making that as a comparison of how the enemy keeps us away from a book 
that actually is very precious for our lives. Mm -hmm. Because as we walk in deeper understanding and just maybe just start declaring every day, I love the book of Revelation. Yes. Maybe start speaking the thing that maybe in the past is like, I don't know, all those dragons, all those different things that are in mm -hmm. there. But just start speaking over yourself. I love the book of Revelation and I am going to learn I am going to learn what yes. is spoken of in this book. Amen. I believe God is going to release some beautiful things I on know his he is. children. The first thing that's going to be lifted is any fear and any intimidation yes. about being in this book. That's right. Any fear and any intimidation about being in this beautiful right. book of Revelation is going to be taken, taken off. off. And the children of God because the very first words of chapter 1 talk about how blessed, blessed. the person is They're who beautiful. reads it and, and understands, understands it. it. So, Father God, even yes. this night, we're thanking we thank you, you that what the enemy may have wanted to yes, do right. uh, in just cutting off this word, yes. he's not successful. He's not. He is not successful. We thank you, Lord, that we at celebration. We're thanking you that you are giving us a new love for the book yes. of Revelation. Yes. And Father God, a love we to be able to that. walk into this yes. book and to receive and understanding great understanding about concerning this book it. that we've never yes. had before. In the mighty name of Jesus. And we call it forth. We call it done. We call it forth. We call in it Jesus in name. Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, we have prayed over the offering. We're going to pray our Psalm 91. Amen. 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 So if you have Psalm 91, you can read it and share it out of any translation that you're reading. But I am reading out of the Passion Translation. And this is what we do each and every service. We continue to keep the bloodline around That's right. our homes Absolutely. and our places of employment. We Amen. keep our doors covered and we yes. just walk in the promises of this dear psalm. Psalm 91. When you sit enthroned under the shadow... Of the shadow of Shaddai, you are hidden in the strength of God yes. most high. Amen. He's the hope that holds me and the stronghold to shelter me, the only God for me and my great confidence. Yes. He will rescue you from every hidden trap of the enemy, yes. and he will protect you from false accusation and any deadly curse. Yes. His massive arms are wrapped around you, protecting you, and you can run under his covering mm -hmm. of majesty and hide. His arms of faithfulness are shield, keeping you from harm. Yes. You will never worry about an attack of demonic forces Come at on. night, nor have to fear a spirit of darkness coming against you. Don't mm. fear, a thing. fear a thing. Whether by night or by day, demonic danger will not trouble you, nor will the powers of evil be launched against you. Even in a time of disaster with thousands and thousands being killed, you will remain unscathed and unharmed. Yes. You will be a spectator as the wicked perish in judgment, for they will be paid back for what they've done. Mm -hmm. When we live our lives within the shadow of God Most High, our secret hiding place, we will always be shielded from harm. How then could evil prevail against us or disease yes. infect us? God sends angels with special orders to protect yes. you wherever you go. Defending you from all harm. Mm -hmm. If you walk into a trap, they'll be there for you and keep you from stumbling. You'll even walk unharmed among the fiercest powers of darkness, trampling every one of them beneath your feet. Yes. For here is what the Lord has spoken to me. Because you have delighted in me as my great lover, I will greatly protect you. I will set you in a high place, safe and secure, before my face. Amen. I will answer your cry for help every time every you pray. Time. And you will find and feel my presence even in your time of pressure and trouble. I will be your glorious hero and give you a feast. Yes. You will be satisfied yes. with a full life and Come on. all that I do for all. you. For you will enjoy the fullness of my salvation. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. We Hallelujah. love you, we celebration. Love you. Many of you are just going to get this tag. You're going to find it later and jump on. 
And as we said at the beginning, there was a little bit of bad weather. And so I think that might have disrupted our feed tonight. Disrupted Not positive, thing. but we're here together. Hey, we yes, love we are. You. We love you. We want to send blessings. Yes, we pray the Lord Share will bless you and the Lord will keep, keep you. you. The Lord will make his face to shine upon, shine you, upon you. Lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Both now and forever. You're Amen. blessed in the city. You're blessed in the country. Everything you put your hands to, it's blessed. Yes. Your barns are blessed. Your fields, fields are blessed. Are blessed. Your needy boards are blessed. Amen. The fruit of your womb is blessed. You're blessed when you rise, rise up. up. You're blessed when you lie down. Amen. You're the head, not, the, not tail. the tail. On top, not on the bottom. Amen. You're the redeemed of the Lord. And the redeemed, redeemed of the, the Lord, Lord said, said Amen. 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 We love you. We love God you God bless so you. Much. We love y'all so much. God bless you. Amen. Mm -mm -mm. Love you, love you, love you, love you, love you. Love you, love you, love you. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen, Eric. God bless.